Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Ali Jeter. And I'm Leah Fronte. And this is your news now. Catboard hosted its third annual Wing Bowl last Wednesday night. Let's check in with Danielle on the event. I'm Danielle Alio, live on location here in the marketplace for the third annual Wing Bowl, where several teams are competing for the best tasting wings. Let's check in on some of the action. Basically, it was like a spin on like the Wing Bowl champions championship so what they do is they create their sauce they have 15 minutes and um, we have to distribute the wings to the people to try and they each have a ballot that they can vote on their favorite and then we tally the votes and we have first and second place winners let's check in and see what the audience thinks of the different types of wings the first one was pretty good, the second one was a little, a little weird, yeah. I like the first one. I like the, the wingettes, team one. Yeah, I, my favorites are the first one, the wingettes, they're my favorite. And like, why did you like them? They were like, they were sweet. They were sweet and spicy at the same time. They were really like good, them. they're my favorite. We won! We are so excited! I forced them won. to do it, and now they're happy. <laughs> Congratulations to the winners of the third annual Wing Bowl here in the marketplace. Keep an eye out for Capboard's Freak Week coming up at the end of October. Location will be there to give you all of the updates. I'm Danielle Alio on location. Back to the studio. Let's visit Greg Stevens as he tells us about the volleyball tournament. On Monday in the Dixon Center, the sixth annual Fair Trade Volleyball Tournament began. Volleyball is the same as beach volleyball, however, it is played on a squash court, so you can use the walls to your advantage. We talked to Raja, a CRS ambassador, about the volleyball tournament and what fair trade is about. Fair trade is uh, basically ensuring that we are buying uh, items, that the people who make them are getting all their wages. Uh, for the volleyball, I mean, people play volleyball, they just make up teams and uh, students can play for fun. But at the same time, the most important thing is promotion. We're promoting fair trade because this is actually fair trade month. And we're trying to get the campus to be a fair trade campus. So this is a great time to have the volleyball. We actually have it every year for five years, I think, now. The tournament began on Monday and will end with a championship match on Wednesday. For location, I'm Greg Stevens. Back to you in the newsroom. Now let's check in with Capword for your exclusive sneak peek on next week's Freak Week. We're going to kick it off this Friday, October 21st at the Bates Motel. Uh, bus leaves at 7, so be in Jasmine's by 6.30. Um, there's three attractions that you're going to be able to go to. You're going to be able to go to the Haunted House, um, which is the Bates Motel. There's a corn maze, and there's a creepy uh, hayride. And then Monday, the 24th, we're having Ghost Hunters. <laughs> it starts in Grace at 8, and then we'll head over to the mansion and finish there. Tuesday, the 25th, is not a, an event ca Capboard is doing, but it's sponsored by WIBF, and it's their scavenger hunt. <laughs> Wednesday, the day after the scavenger hunt, is going to be the Capture the Clue Mystery Dinner. It's $5 and it's in the mansion. At 6. Yeah. At 6 o'clock. Today, <laughs> Athletics is kicking off Halloween Havoc, where um, we go out and support the fall sports entering in the playoffs and also the new winter sports like basketball. There's going to be a lot of different competitions uh, and different prizes like costume. And then following that, following that at 10 and Grace is the Boo Dance. All proceeds go to cancer. 
Uh, I believe you can dress up. So do that. Look like me. Friday Capward is doing an all day, or not an all day, an all night movie marathon. It starts at 7, they're going to be playing a bunch of movies, like 3 or 4 different scary movies. Some are really, really scary, some are just your regular classic Halloween stories. And that starts at 7 and it's in Widener. So, go. And then Sunday, the 30th, at 7.30, Capward is doing their Haunted Mansion. It's $3 for students. Five dollars for non-students and ten dollars is the family rate because we're opening it up for the community because it's our service event and all proceeds go to the American Cancer Society. Come to Freak Week. Oh. Earlier this week, police identified the three people who kept a group of mentally challenged individuals locked in a basement in order to steal their disability benefits and are now being held on a number of charges, including kidnapping. The disturbing discovery came when the police were called to a home on the 4700 block of Longshore Avenue on Saturday for an issue involving a dispute between a tenant and a landlord. The landlord found the people locked behind a steel door in the basement of, of the home. And that was your trip around the block. Now let's go across the nation with Leah. Thanks, Allie. Earlier this week, the Obama administration said it is ready to repeal the Community Living Assistance Services and Support Act, known as the Class Act. The act was intended to allow citizens to purchase long-term care insurance at any point during their careers for a low monthly premium so they could collect additional income if they were later disabled. Health and Human Services informed Congress there was no path close to solvency for the program. Despite political criticism and ongoing arrests, the Occupy Wall Street protests have entered their second month in New York and around the world. Although many are not sure about the movement, it seems to be gaining steam as last month they brought in over $300,000 in donations. Movement organizers saw they inspired the Arab Spring that led to the toppling of regimes in Tunisia and Egypt. 25 deaths are now linked to the Listeria outbreak. The deadliest outbreak of foodborne illness in the U.S. is more than 25 years. The Center for D Disease Control has reported more than 100 people have been sickened, but the number of illnesses may continue to increase, as sy symptoms of listeria can take up to two months to appear. And those were the top stories from across the nation. Now let's take a trip around the world with Allie. Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez has less than two years to live, his former doctor said earlier that last week. Although he has been through four rounds of chemotherapy in Cuba, the exact nature of the cancer has not been disclosed. Chavez has been in power since 1999 under the United Socialist Party and said that he will recover in time to win re-election in 2012. Earlier this week, Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit was freed after being held captive for more than five years by Palestinian militants. He was captured in 2006 after militants were found tunneling into the Jewish state and acting on army outposts. Israel immediately launched an attack into Gaza to res rescue him, but failed to free him. In exchange for Shalit, Israel freed more than 1,000 Palestinian prisoners. Unions in Greece have called for the mother of, sh of all strikes as they prepare to protest the austerity measures submitted by the Greek parliament. The measures include tax hikes, wage cuts, public sector layoffs, and changes to the collective bargaining rules. European Union leaders are racing to lay the foundations of the new rescue plan so that Greece will default on its loans. And that was your trip around the world. Now here's Jimmy for your weekly tech connection. Hey everyone, I was able to get the new, newly released Apple iPhone over the weekend. Here is my hands-on demonstration and some first impressions of the iPhone 4S. The iPhone 4S, the outside's the same, but the inside's completely different. Suri, the new voice assistant, is just an amazing feature. She can take dictations, she can show you restaurant reviews, she can show you directions, she can show you traffic, weather, as well as ask, you can ask many different things, but in a conversational style. Show me driving directions from here to New York City. Here are directions to New York City. Another great use for Surrey is driving. If you're driving and you need to send a text message to your mom, you tap the button, you say send text message to mom, it reads it back to you and you can confirm it or send it. Overall, I think Surrey is just one of the big features of the iPhone 4S that is well worth buying it if you want that alone. Now with graphic improvements, it's just that's also an amazing feature. Seven times graphical improvement over the previous iPhone. 
you have smooth graphics, you have playing games is just a breeze. If you're using the interface in general, it's just amazing. Another, another improvement is the camera. The camera is an 8 megapixel camera. I think it could re easily replace point and shoot cameras in the next 2-3 years with the next iPhone and after that because it takes 1080p video which is um, just amazing video for home movies if you're out and about with your friends it really really just makes it a worthwhile camera on top of Surrey and on top of the graphics it's just a worthwhile phone if you're into phones that can really improve your life but at the same time if it's a worthy improvement then definitely go for it if you're still on contract with an iPhone 4 or another phone that you still have I would hold off until the price comes down, but overall the iPhone 4S is definitely a worthwhile buy. Now for the latest tech news. Research in Motion's BlackBerry email and text messaging servers suffered a multi-day outage. Affecting nearly every continent, the outage started in a European data center, which then spread to North America, Asia, Africa, the Middle East, South America, over the course of the next two days after a failure of a backup system. It led to a crippling effect reportedly caused problems for millions of BlackBerry owners. Rims executives confirmed late last week that the four-day service outage was the largest in the company's history. The BlackBerry messaging service was restored over the weekend, yet the investors are calling for the ousting of the co-CEOs and as well as possibly a corporate takeover if Rim fails to improve its earnings next quarter. Netflix announced that it will not be spinning off its DVD by mail service into a new company called Quickster. Netflix CEO Reed Hastings issued yet another apology to customers, admitting the company may have moved fat too fast this time. The recent price hike, along with limited streaming choices, have had Netflix customers in an uproar, despite offering slightly expanded content deals in the inclusion of, of all of the Star Trek television series and exclusive rights to previous seasons of The Walking Dead from AMC. With renewed competition from internet video providers like Blockbuster and Amazon, time will tell if Netflix will be able to stay in business. I'll be sure to stay plugged in to the latest tech news. Now back to Allie and Leah. Now on to Danielle for your tip of the week. Thanks, Leah and Allie. I know that when summer months end, your favorite seasonal fruits and vegetables are harder to find and maybe even more expensive. But when one season ends, another one begins. So this week, I want to give you a tip on what seasonal fruits are now available for the fall. Fruits and vegetables such as apples, pears, pumpkins, pomegranates, grapes, figs, and cauliflower are now available more than ever in your local grocery store. Many orchards even have the option to come out and pick your own apples and pumpkins. These fruits and vegetables are not only good for you, but there are so many simple healthy recipes you can make right in your dorm with these products. For example, a great snack to make is sliced apples on whole grain cracker with low fat cheese. A personal favorite of mine is apples and peanut butter. Be sure to check out our Facebook page this week because I'm going to put up some links to fall recipes you can follow that feature these seasonal fruits and vegetables. Our Facebook can be found at facebook.com location. If there is a recipe you want to share with us, leave us a post on Facebook. That's your tip of the week. Keep watching because next I'm going to give you some tips on Halloween attractions in the area with a behind the scenes look and when to go when the lines aren't too long. Back to you, Allie. And now let's take a look back in history. On October 18, 1867, the United States took possession of Alaska after purchasing the land from Russia for over $7 million. The purchase included over 600,000 square miles, about twice the size of Texas. Although the purchase was unpopular at first, it turned more favorable as gold was discovered in the Klondike River, sparking a gold rush. On October 20, 1947, a congressional committee began investigating the communist influence in Hollywood, kicking the Red Scare into high gear. A small group known as the Hollywood Ten resisted and complained that the hearings were illegal and against their First Amendment rights. Many were blacklisted, including playwright Arthur Miller and filmmaker Orson Welles. And that was your look back in history. Now let's hear what about Mary Kay has to say about Cabrini Sports. Getting ready for a new season, while four games don't make a season, the Flyers are getting off to a pretty good start. They're currently 3-1 in the 2011-2012 NHL campaign, only having one loss to the LA Kings. After a shocking 1-4 start, the Philadelphia Eagles finally won against the Redskins 20-13. I know, surprising. To keep this season alive, the Birds will have to give it their all against the Dallas Cowboys this Sunday at 8-20 at the Lincoln Financial Field. As for Cabrini Sports, the field hockey team continued their fifth straight win against the defeating Keystone College 4-1. With four games remaining in the regular season, the Lady Cats now stand at 9-4 overall and 4-1 in the CSAC. 
110 minutes of competitive, tough soccer was played this past weekend by both the Gabrini men and women's soccer team. The Lady Cavs continued their win streak of six consecutive games as they ended in a 0-0 tie to Gwen and Mercy Griffins in double overtime. As for the men's team, senior Jim Maddock was able to put the ball in the back of the net with just seconds left in double overtime for the win against Baptist Bible College. Both teams have just three games to go in regular season conference play. The fall sports are finishing up their season and getting their way to the CSAC championship. Be sure to go out and support your friends, teammates, classmates, and of course your seniors. That's it for now. Be sure to tune in next week for more sports coverage. Thanks, Mary-Kate. And now on to Melissa for your entertainment news. Thanks, ladies. Will Lindsay Lohan ever get enough of getting into trouble? She was kicked out of the women's shelter where she was supposed to be serving her court order community service. Now she claims to be on her best behavior probably because her next court date is coming up and she will possibly be facing some jail time. Juliana Rancic recently announced that she is battling the early stages of breast cancer. And since the Today Show aired, many celebrities have shown her much support through Twitter, allowing her to know that she will not be fighting on her own. This past weekend, Catboard hosted its once a semester Broadway trip to NYC to see the Adams Family musical, as well as to tour the city. Let's check it out. Adams Family on Broadway was a great show, especially for the theme this year for Freak Week and also Halloween. It gave everyone a chance who has not seen a Broadway show to go to a Broadway event that was, that was very fit for their budget and also a great new feature to the Broadway selection. We had a good time and it was also hilarious and funny and also a great way for people who have not seen it Adam Family to get a good feel for it. Even though they weren't allowed to take pictures in a theater, they did enjoy themselves. The Adams Family musical was hilarious right from the start. The Grandma and Uncle Fester characters had the audience laughing so much. The students toured the city that never sleeps and they also got to do a little shopping. Just being at NYC all together was great. On this trip I even caught a cool sale event at American Eagle. I wonder what Broadway show they will see next semester. Well, that's all the entertainment updates I have for you this time. I'm Melissa Webb, now back to Leah and Ali. Thanks, Melissa. That's all we have for you this week. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I'm Leah Ferrante. And I'm Ali Jeter. Have a great week, Cabrini.